Hey there everybody, Don Evans here from WatchReport.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Swiss Military Tank. The uh, full name is Swiss Military Tank Nero Rawhide. You are looking at a 44 millimeter case, 12 millimeters thick, 22 millimeter lug width, a Ronda 517 quartz movement, it is PVD coated as you can tell. It has a sapphire crystal. And you could see that it has a canvas, almost ballistic. I don't want to maybe call it ballistic nylon, but uh, a canvas strap with a uh, soft leather backing. Your retail price, you are looking at $438. Now, this is one of the. Uh, lower priced watches from Smith, uh, Swiss Military Watch. Um, if you're not familiar with Swiss Military Watch, uh, it's Charmex Swiss Military Watches. Uh, you might be familiar with them in terms of their dive watches. They're very large, very big, very heavy dive watches. Now, they do have a line of pilot watches as well. So there's a lot of different watches that they do, but uh, their claim to fame has been like the 20,000 feet divers that they've won awards for and everything. So this is one of their less expensive models uh, coming in at $438. And uh, yes, it is a quartz movement, but I think at $438 for the price, that's not a bad deal considering uh, all you have to offer here. So let me zoom in here and we'll give you a closer look. As you can see, you know the center dial here is textured i always want to call that the uh the meat pounding texture you know if you've ever seen um a meat tenderizer um, but we can call it a grid pattern as well you have your orange chapter ring you could see you have uh nice applied markers there inset with super luminova you also have a day and a date Hands are coming up here on 11 o'clock, so let me unscrew the crown. As you can see, the crown has an anodized ring there to match the orange on the dial. Black and orange is the theme here, obviously. So here you could take a better look at the hands. As you can see, these are not your run-of-the-mill uh, stock hands that we see on so many dive watches these days. Of course, you're water-resistant here to 200 meters. And uh, while I have the watch here, let's give a spin of the bezel. This bezel is fantastic. As you can see, there's no wiggle or wobble here. Very nice and easy to turn. Precise clicks the way a bezel should be. And you can see you have the large loom pip there at the 12. Here's a look at your crown with the Swiss Cross logo. You have a brushed PBD case. But then on the back, it's actually a polished PBD uh, underneath the lugs in the back of the case. Stainless steel case back. You can see a nice stamping there of the Swiss cross sapphire crystal. When we take a look at the band, as I said, it is like a, a canvas strap. You got orange stitching to match the theme of the watch. A soft uh, suede leather backing. Um, the strap is, you know, as new is kind of uncomfortable. I will show it to you on the wrist, of course. Uh, yeah, it is kind of uncomfortable. It is, uh, it, it, it's a very thick strap and it's uh, like the canvas part is very, very stiff, which means as far as, you know, durability, uh, you know, it, it should hold up very well. It's just going to take some, a good amount of time, I feel, until it breaks in and uh, really wraps around your wrist there. Now, one of the other things I want to point out, and uh, I'm sure, well, I apologize because I have the crown out. I want you to pay attention here to the second hand. As you could see, yes, it is not hitting the markers. Now, you know, this is something that you can encounter with uh, certain quartz watches. And, uh, you know, I would say, first and foremost, if you are interested in this watch, if you like the look of it, and uh, you're wanting to get one of these, uh, whether you're going to get one from a dealer, whether you're going to get one straight from Charmex Swiss Military, I would simply, you know, say, hey, uh, could you check mine and make sure that the second hand is hitting the markers dead on before you send it out to me? 
because I imagine that not all of their watches, um, not all of this model does that. Um, it's probably, you know, um, you know, just a few of them or maybe it's every other one. I, I don't know. I can't say that with a fact actually. So, but as you can see on this example that I have here, it is off about a good, I would say a good, about a good half a second on each of the markers. And, you know, I, I spoke to a fellow colleague of mine and he's like, Hey, you know, he's like, I've had that on a tag, uh, Hoyer, you know, and which it really is unacceptable. So like I said, if you are interested in this, I do not imagine that all of them are like this. So if you want one and you're going to order one, I'd say, hey, make sure you check it and send me a perfect one. Oh, every single time I do a video, this clock in the background goes off. So yes, you can hear uh, the clock. It is now 11 a.m. here while I am recording the videos, but uh, nothing I could do about that now. No big deal. Everybody likes to hear a chime every now and then. So give me a nice look here around the case. You can see you have like a nice grippy pattern. That pattern actually measure, uh, matches the pattern here on the inside of the dial. And uh, gives you some extra, not only does it look nice, but it gives you some extra added grip when you are rotating that bezel. Going to give the watch a charge here. And uh, we'll come right back and uh, we'll give you a, a loom shot. All right, we are back. As you can see, I charged this. I charged this for about 30 seconds um, under my lamps here. And uh, as you can see, the hour and minute hand and the second hand dot there glow very, very, very bright. Not as bright on the markers or the pip. Of course, I do not have this in complete darkness here. If I put my hand over, you see it is a little better on the markers there. But there is a quick shot of the loom. Um, I do have uh, photos of the loom where I charged it for a little bit longer and uh, did in complete darkness as well. All right, we are back here. As you can see, I have it on my seven and a half inch wrist. You can see it is a nice size at 44 millimeters. And uh, as I said, the strap is uncomfortable. Um, out of the box. It is a very thick, you know, durable looking strap. I would suggest maybe just trying to bend it, rough it up, maybe uh, soak it in some water and let it dry, see if it softens it up a little bit. Or hey, you know what, just wear it and uh, I'm sure it will break in. Another point of note though, I have a seven and a half inch wrist and you could see uh, I am in the third hole here, which means that this particular strap is not going to fit wrists much larger than mine. Matter of fact, I don't even know if a seven and three quarter inch wrist would be able to wear this out of the box. Um, fortunately, they are 22 millimeters. So if you want to, you know, I've been actually wearing it on this strap. It's a Hirsch accent rubber. And uh, I think, uh, you know, this matches it very well. Of course, any 22 millimeter strap that you have will work. But there is your look at the Swiss military tank Nero Rawhide. You could see the full review with the pictures and uh, my written and updated thoughts at watchreport.com. Click the I in the video description. Or excuse me, yeah, click the I in the video, upper right hand corner, excuse me. As always, check us out on social media. We are on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. This has been Don Evans for watchreport.com. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you on the next video.